Hello, and welcome to this tutorial on how to use Zoom for class. So when you log into Zoom, you'll see something that looks kind of like this, although instead of a picture of Dr. Togerson and my daughter, you will see the slides for today here in the main area. And now let's go through some of the features that you might want to use over the course of class. Uh, first things first, uh, down in the lower left, you have the mute button. The, it's considered general good professional practice to keep yourself muted uh, when you're not speaking. This way, any random background noise that might be going on, your roommates bouncing around, whatever, uh, doesn't come through the meeting and distract everyone. So you can uh, use this to mute yourself and, and please do, please mute yourself unless you are actively speaking. Uh, you can use the space bar to temporarily unmute yourself. Uh, you also have the button to start your video. Um, you can use your video or not. Uh, if you're able, it's kind of nice to be able to see each other's faces, but some people don't like the video coming into their homes and that sort of thing, and, and that's all very reasonable as well. One nice feature that Zoom does have is what's called virtual background. So if you click this little arrow on your Zoom uh, button, you can see choose virtual background. And if you use this, then it'll kind of green screen you and you can replace whatever's behind you with an image of your choice. You can even upload your own images. So this will let you sort of green screen. So we'll be able to see your face and you, but what's behind you will be replaced with some sort of image. You'll see me do this in class, and it's actually how I've been making all the other videos with the UMass background. You also have this uh, participants option. So if you click this, you'll see all the participants in the meeting. Uh, and there's a few other features in here that are also quite nice. You can tell me to go slower or go faster. Both of those are fine. Uh, there's a thumbs up, a thumbs down, an applause. Um, all of those types of options. Uh, feel free to use these little icons. I think the ones most useful for class are probably go slower or go faster. And if you'd like me to go faster through the material, just let me know. I'll be watching this uh, as we go along, okay? And if I see a whole bunch of people telling me to go faster, then I'll go faster. If I see a whole bunch of people telling me to go slower, then I will slow down. Close this out. Uh, there's also a chat, so you can open this here. And if you have a question, you can shoot it here to the chat. So, and I will read it and discuss it and try to answer it as best I can. You're also welcome and in fact encouraged to just speak uh, your question using the microphone. But if you're in a really noisy environment and you don't want all that noise coming through or whatever, you're welcome to just use the chat as well. So you can, uh, I would please request that you shoot your question to everyone so that everyone can see the question when I go to answer it. Uh, if you have personal questions and it's like before class or after class, or you want to tell me that I'm muted my microphone and have forgotten to unmute it or something like that, you can message uh, me directly. Uh, that's an option. But like I said, if you have a question about the material, odds are a bunch of other people have the question as well. So please just message everyone so that everyone can benefit from your question. If you do have a question about sort of something that's only kind of tangentially related and you're just kind of curious, at, you know, and you don't want to interrupt the flow of the lecture because it's not directly relevant, one option you can do is you will also be able to message our TAs. So if you have a question like this, feel free to shoot one of the TAs a question, your question, and they'll do their best to answer it, and if they can't, they'll forward it along to me. So that is a resource for you. Uh, during class, I will occasionally use the Zoom polls uh, as sort of like what you might use as a clicker in a physical classroom. Uh, they should pop up automatically when I activate them from my meeting, but if for some reason they don't, uh, you can click this little polls button here at the bottom and, and they should show up for you. Okay. The last thing is, is during class, as is discussed elsewhere in this syllabus, you'll be spending most of your time solving problems. I'll send you to breakout rooms 
where you can work with your peers to solve problems. And for that, it's probably really convenient to be able to share your screen. So you can kind of all see what you're working on. So when I send you to your breakout rooms, you might want to share your screen. Uh, obviously, there's a little button here for that. Share screen. And you can click it. And in a breakout room, uh, you'll be able to do that. You'll be able to steal. In the main room here, you won't. But when you're in your breakout rooms, you'll be able to steal from each other. So click yes, and you can see there's a couple of different options. You can share in uh, whole desktop windows. You can share specific applications, or you can share what's known as the whiteboard. And if you share that, you get, well, a whiteboard, which allows you to draw. Uh, you can type. Uh, there's like a laser pointer kind of thing that you can use. There's a couple of different features up here and you can save your work. So this is a nice way you can collaboratively uh, work on material together. Okay. You can also record the meeting, but that's not really going to be necessary because I'm going to be doing recording myself and there's no reason uh, for you to record it as well. I mean, you can if you want to, but I'm going to record them and post them to Echo 360, so it's not really necessary. So hopefully you found this tutorial on the basics of how to use Zoom for class helpful, and this concludes this video.